Remember send me the link for. Let's go to my next. Did you ever did you ever send me the link for uh, uh, Namras's podcast that I did? No, Guru Maharaj, I didn't send. Can you think that would be something you could do? Yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. I'll do. Yeah, Namra, Namras podcast. It's on every morning, I think, from eleven o'clock. And I I did a program a couple of. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I did. Yeah, I'll send you good message. I never, I never actually saw it, so I just wanted. Sure, good message. I'll send. And another thing on uh, on the scheduling of the uh, daily uh, conference programs here. Okay, I'll take a look and see if we did that one or not. Yes, good mm -hmm. Even I remember the same. Uh, This one you uh, you just took a glance and you didn't read it. You said you can uh, you will do it today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this was. Yeah. So okay. This one. This is the one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vinda Madhya Lila. CC chapter 22, verse number 21, continuation on the uh, explanation of the science of devotional service. Kevala jnana mukti dite nara bhakti vine krishna mo krishnan mukka mukhe se mukta hoya vina jane. Speculative knowledge alone without devotional service is not able to give liberation. On the other hand, even without knowledge, one can attain liberation if one engages in the Lord's devotional service. Mm -hmm. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. One cannot attain liberation simply by speculative knowledge. Even though one may be able to distinguish between Brahman and matter, one's liberation will be hampered if one is misled into thinking that the living entity is as good as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Indeed, one falls down again on the material platform because considering oneself the supreme person, the supreme absolute truth is offensive. When such a person comes in contact with pure devotee, he can actually become liberated from material bondage and engage in the Lord's service. The prayer by Bilbo Manga Thakur is relevant. Bhaktis Tviya Stirathada Bhagavan Yadi Shad Daivana Palati Divya Kishora Mukti, Mukti Swayam, Mukunch, Mukunli, Danjali Seva, Te Sman, Dharmat Bakama, Gayatas Mamram Patikshaha, Batis Twayas Dira, Tara Bhagavan Yadisha, Daivain and Napalati, Divya Kishora Mutihi, Mukti Swayam, Mukunli, Danjali Seva, Te Sman, Dharmatma, Dharmarta, Kama Gataya, Samaya Patiksha. Oh, my Lord, if one engages in your pure devotional service with determination, you become visible in your original transcendental youthful form as a supreme personality of Godhead. As far as liberation is concerned, she stands before the devotee with folded hands, waiting to render service. Religion, economic development, and sense gratification are all automatically attained without separate endeavor. It's from the Krishna Karanamrita by Srila Dhuva Mangala Thangkur, verse number 107. Om Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Whoops, you went too far. You were doing good. Shri Mukti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. There you go. Namaste, sir. Oops, you went too far again. You had it. Go down again. Namaste. One more shot. There you go. Stop right there. Namaste, sir. Swati Deva. Go the money for Charlie Nene. We say Sasunya Vadi Pastyat Yare Satarine. Bancha kalpa taru vischa kripa sindhu pae vicha titanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha. 
Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Puttananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So speculative knowledge without devotional service cannot give liberation. In fact, it leads to thinking in the wrong way. Speculative knowledge is simply the mind's trying to understand philosophical teachings in the Shastras through its own mental and intellectual powers. Therefore, when it says that the Lord is near Guna, they conclude that the Lord is without qualities. The word Guna means qualities and near means without. But unless one hears from the pure devotee spiritual master, one will get a different idea than the actual understanding. For example, in the word near guna, the word near, in this case, refers to no, nothing material. So Krishna is near guna, but he has no material qualities. But he does have qualities. So the impersonalist will, will say, well, the Lord is without qualities, therefore he, he is not a person, because a person indicates qualities. And therefore, the highest and the most complete understanding of the absolute truth from their speculative point of view is the impersonal Brahman effulgence. So speculation leads to more speculation, which here, as Sila Prabhupada said, leads to offenses. For example, another speculation is that the living entity is uh, of the same nature as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, there is the achinta beta beta tattva principle, and that is the absolute principle. But the speculators on the scripture will say, well, I am spirit, and God is also spirit, so we're both spirit. Therefore, we're both God, because spirit re refers to the supreme, supreme energy. Therefore, I'm also the supreme energy. Therefore, if I'm the supreme energy, I must also be the supreme. But our understanding is Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitananam Eko Bahonam Vidadati Kama Nityo means uh, one, Nityanam means many, many. So that, that one supreme is maintaining the many supremes, and no one is equal to or no one is greater to him. Eko Bahonam Vidadati Kama. So that is the uh, complete understanding of the relationship between the living entities and the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, speculative knowledge is what it is. Um, and there are many who like to read the scriptures and speculate. In fact, that's how books are actually created. A person will read Shastra and uh, interpret Shastra according to their own understanding and write a book based on that. And that book will be considered to be correct by the general mass of people who do not have an understanding. And therefore we have so many books, just like Srila Prabhupada says there are, uh, this was the time when Srila Prabhupada was present. And he made that comment that it, there are 666, 664 editions of the Bhagavad Gita. And so um, each of the editions has their own understanding. I, I remember I was riding on the plane in India, traveling from one local city to another. I met some very nice gentlemen on the plane. They were sitting just next to us. And uh, we got to talking. And then he uh, revealed at one point he was a follower of a particular guru. And his guru had written a book on uh, Bhagavad Gita interpreting Bhagavad Gita as the, uh, as the position of uh, Shiva, you know, using Shiva's position and taking the position of Krishna using. And he thought it was very philosophical, very intellectual, very uh, uh, nicely read. And he was so eager to give me a copy of his books, but I basically, he understood that I wasn't interested in anything but as uh, what, what Srila Prabhupada has given us in our understanding. As Prabhupada said, I, I'm not saying anything different than what Krishna says. I'm simply writing down what Krishna says. 
And so people cannot understand that. And they think the more you speculate on the absolute truth, the more you reveal more of the nature of the absolute truth. But speculation has to be philosophical and it has to be in line with the principles of devotional service. And that's where the spiritual master comes in to help clear the way uh, for pure knowledge and not knowledge that is simply someone's ideas. <laughs> And here, it says that now after Prabhupada gives that, he says that one who engages fully in devotional service, even if they don't have knowledge, they can still reach the platform of liberation. In other words, they can be free from all material taints and be situated on the transcendental platform. Uh, the platform of devotional service includes the platform of liberation. And when one is nicely engaged, we might say fully engaged in devotional service, there's no question of trying for liberation separately. They automatically include it as is first here mentioned by one of the greatest of all philosophical teachers in um, the principle of Krishna Bhakti in his Krishna Karanamrita, Bilba Mangala Thakur writes, <laughs> that as far as liberation is concerned, it stands at my door to his way uh, with folded hands saying, how can I serve you? And he actually says, Muk Mukti and Mukti. Mukti means liberation and Mukti means the happiness that one achieves from sense enjoyment. He says, both of these are standing at my door asking, how can I serve you? So one who is engaged in devotional service, the Purusharthas, as th they're mentioned here, Dharma, uh, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, these are the activities of the people in general, uh, are automatically included in pure devotional service. One doesn't have to try for these separately because they are auto automatically included. So pure devotion, devotional service is superior to all forms of activity because it directly connects with the lotus feet of the Lord. Um, and not simply trying to uh, engage in activities in order to gain some uh, remuneration through the activity. In other words, one engages in devotional service for the pleasure of the Lord. So speculative knowledge has no place and it's what it is, it's speculation. Sometimes we see, um, uh, we uh, sometimes we take issue with a person who speculates. Now there is philosophical speculation of the absolute truth when you read and you, when you're trying to understand something in relationship to what is being said, you sometimes go to other sources to confirm it and then get a further explanation on what you're trying to understand. That is called philosophical explanations. That's why the Shastras confirm each other in different places. So when we're getting knowledge from one particular place and we're not clear, we can also seek out that knowledge in another place in the Shastras to get a further understanding of what is being said. That is called philosophical speculation. And that is fine also. It's not in the realm of pure devotional service, but it is knowledge which can be used in the service of the Lord. But speculative knowledge is what it is. It's speculative, speculation. Speculation is hypotheses or conjecture. And um, to conjecture hypotheses or to uh, ruminate on a particular point and based on one's own understanding and maybe the understanding they have gotten from other sources, they come up with some conclusion. Therefore, it says that Shruti Shmiti Pradana Bhi Pancharachriki Vidhi Vidam. One has to take knowledge from the Shrutis and the Shmitis. 
The Shrutis and the Shritis and the Pancharachrikis, these make up the Vedas. The Shrutis are the actual Vedas. The Shritis are the commentaries on the Shrutis. And the Pancharachrikis are the actual activities of, of engaging in service to the Lord in his form as Archivigraha or deity worship. These three aspects, but two of them are most important in Ashrutis and the Shmitis. We deal a lot with the Shmitis because most of us in the age of Kali cannot deal with the Shrutis. They're too complex, they're too dense, and they're too very uh, highly philosophical that unless you actually read and study all the Shrutis, you find it hard to actually uh, understand sections unless you cooperate those sections with further sections. The Shrutis are deep and these are the four original Vedas. Actually Veda is one, but uh, Vyasadeva has taken the one Veda and he's broken it down into four. Uh, the Rig Veda, the Shama Veda, Artha Veda, and the Yajur Veda. And he's made four Vedas, but then Knowing in the age of Kali that people are not so inclined to Vedic knowledge, he created one of the fifth Veda. The fifth Veda is the, the Ramayan and the Mahabharata are considered to be the fifth Vedas. And so, um, but in this age, we get most of our knowledge from the Vedas through the Shmiti. Shmiti means commentary. Now, even though Krishna spoke directly, the Bhagavad Gita, he was speaking, he was speaking in relationship to the Upanishads, which were which is the original Veda. So therefore the Gita is called Gita Upanishad. That is another name for the Bhagavad Gita. But Krishna just made that same knowledge more readily available for us in this age of Kali. And so therefore Bhagavad Gita is a Shmiti commentary, although it's spoken directly by the Lord, he gave he gives the commentary. <laughs> so uh, if you know a little bit about how to, the Vedas work, then you can understand the different branches of the Vedas and what is the essence of the Vedas. Vedaisa Chaham Eva Veda Vedyoma Vedanta Krit Veda Vedeva Chaham. Krishna speaks the essence of the Vedas in Bhagavad Gita, in the 15th chapter, he says, Krishna himself speaks this verse. He says, I am situated in everyone's heart, and for me comes knowledge, members, remembers, and forgetfulness. He, so he says, knowledge comes from me, remembrance comes from me, and if you want to forget, that is also coming from me. In other words, I give you the ability in these three categories to understand. Just like the atheist, the atheists want to believe there is no God. And so Krishna will help them understand through philosophical knowledge that there's no God. They will come up with a nice philosophy to rationalize the idea there is no God, but where do they get that information from Krishna? <laughs> because they desire not to know God and they push themselves in that direction to confirm it through various philosophies that they create. And Krishna gives them the understanding how to create the philosophies. <laughs> I remember I was sitting on a plane one day and behind me in the seat behind me, just to the side, one person, he noticed me. I was dressed in my, you know, my devotional clothes. And obviously he was an atheist. So he took out a book by uh, it was Richard Dawkins, a famous, uh, uh, famous atheist. And he started reading it out loud. <laughs> and he picked a particular section where uh, Dawkins explains from a very cosmological point of view, his point of view, and that the way the cosmos, the cosmos works, that there could not possibly be a creator for the cosmos. And so he was very enthusiastic to um, let me know that uh, there's no God. 
uh, I could see it would be futile to, to speak with the man, so I didn't say anything. And, uh, but I looked at him late after, he looked like he was really miserable. So, you know, you can see atheists, they, they carry themselves around and they don't look very happy at all. They're always quite miserable looking. Some people look happy and are miserable, but some people are actually miserable and they look that way. <laughs> And the atheists, he, they, they can't really hide the fact that, you know, they're pushing out the essence of all existence, life itself, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, uh, they're living a shallow existence. It's not even life itself. It's just, it's just a shell with a, with a various types of structure called the human body in it. So, yeah, and you see the, 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 uh, the Maya body of impersonalists are also the same. They're very philosophical, but they don't never look very happy at all. You can see them, they're always quoting Shastra and they're always in an argumentative point of view. And they, they look quite unhappy. <laughs> I've been through a number of programs with, uh, with uh, Maya bodies there. And a couple of times, and I had to sit amongst, amongst them and also present Krishna consciousness. And it was very difficult. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, this act, act, it happened in Texas back in the year 1999. I was asked to join a conference of various spiritualists around the world in, in uh, what was it, Austin, Texas? I think it was, yeah. Austin, Texas, and they had this a big Maya body there. His name is Saraswati something. And he had his big, uh, big, big uh, uh, temple on a big, big piece of land. So we all came and I was there as a representative of the Hare Krishna movement. I was miserable just listening to those guys speak because they were so... <laughs> They were just, in fact, most people were arguing with each other because everybody thought they had the right answer. And that's all they do is they argue with each other. And then there was a, a whole set of uh, uh, Brahmacharinis, these tapasis who were women. And they were, they were lady tapasis who were like performing severe austerities. And they, they looked like they were ready to kill you if they, they talk to you. <laughs> so I, and uh, so when it was my turn to speak, I thought, what can I speak? And then I noticed that, that they had various types of icons posted around and they had Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there. So they don't consider Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So I picked up on something common and I spoke about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission of Harinam Sankirtan. I don't know how many people actually listened to my, my speech, but anyway, I did my service. <laughs> so yeah, this is what you you run up against. Srila uh, uh, Prabhupada has clear, cleared away because if you know our philosophy and you know how to present it, you can uh, you can defeat anybody. It's not it's not hard. But you but it's uh, you have to know how to present it in such a way that it becomes convincing. Because our our philosophy is not only transcendental, but it's also logical. It's also logical. It can be it can be what we say. What's the word? Oh. Uh, it can be confirmed through logic and re reasoning mm -hmm. up to a certain point. But the basic principles are very logical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so speculation is what it is. And the whole world does that all the time. Just, just uh, every day there's a new philosophy coming out. Every day there's an a twist on the old philosophy. Uh, uh, to think of new ideas is what people just do all the time. Sometimes they just try to present something different 
just to be different or to make some some uh, remuneration by presenting something unique. And it's just basically they're all mental speculations. So. so we have to hear from Guru. We have to we have to study Shastra. We have to understand from the teachers that have gone before us, the great Acharyas. All our knowledge is there. It's confirmed. It's coming from Krishna itself through disciplic succession. It's not speculated, speculative. It is what is called uh, aroha panta. It is that knowledge that comes down from the highest source. Just like Prabhupada would use the example, if you have a fruit high on a tree, and if you shake the tree to get the fruit, the fruit will probably bang down on the branches, and when it may, might even hit the ground and be damaged. So, but if someone climbs up and then takes that fruit and hands it down to the next branch below, and then all the way down, then the fruit comes down in the same way it was. So that is uh, transcendental knowledge is coming in disciplic succession from the pure devotee acharyas. It's not a matter of speculation. It is a confirmation of Krishna's not teaching that is being disseminated in various avenues according to the nature of the people who are hearing. In other words, this knowledge is designed in such a way that people can understand it according to their level of understanding. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the wonderful class and pure devotional service. And we have been uh, listening to this series uh, since last week and uh, it's very wonderful, uh, this topic. So today you spoke about the speculative knowledge. Uh, um, so the verse is uh, quoting about the speculative knowledge and where without liberation, um, so liberation is a part of devotional service, you said, and also uh, speculative knowledge leads to impersonalism and uh, and also voidism. Yeah, it's the Vo voidism also. Yeah. Voidism, yeah. And um, so, but you also said that we can uh, speculate the philosophical uh, knowledge and get guidance from spiritual master. And you also gave examples like how you met other guru, other um, people who are following other gurus uh, in that area. And also you mentioned about the Vedas, um, where Vyasadeva uh, took the Vedas and, and developed. And also how you quoted the verse, Shruti Smriti Purana Adi Pancharatri Ki Vidamina. So one should always um, take shelter of Vedas and Smritis and Puranas. Uh, and also we can have um, uh, speculations we can speculate regarding the uh, philosophy and gain knowledge in the process of gaining knowledge. And finally, you said that- um, that's, uh, philosophical, that's philosophical speculation, yes, just, yes. just for confirmation of various, uh, various philosophical yes, points. Yes, yes yeah. And um, you also said that finally, that from disciplic succession, the knowledge comes as it is um, without any, um, changes so that's what i understood and um thank you so much Guru Maharaj. and dear devotees if you have any questions or comments or realizations uh, please go ahead and you can turn on your cameras um now for the interactive session thank you so much hey. Nice to see the audience. So far, I'm only seeing five people out of out of twenty. And dear devotees, please uh, switch on your camera. We would like to see all of you. Thank you. Yay. See there, Mataji. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Shrimati. Please accept my humble obeisances, dear Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. 
thank you for again enlightening us on how speculation really leads us nowhere. And I was uh, meditating on this pastime in the airplane where this atheist very loudly was reading from a book, obviously in an attempt to draw you in into an argument or you know something where he got a chance then to prove his point. And I was just thinking what restraint uh, you exercised to not get drawn into that. And I'm just marveling at, uh, at that power that you have to, not, to know when to speak and when not to speak. So I'm just thinking to myself, you know, how are we supposed to deal with such situations when we come across people who are just, you know, speaking nonsense sometimes? And we want to straighten them out or tell them, you know, you're just speaking nonsense. But uh, it actually may be wise in some situations to not say anything. How do we know when to say and when not to say anything? Requires intelligence. Ah. <laughs> hmm. Intelligence means discrimination. So in that case, I could see it was just something that would... Mm, just it would be useless or just a waste of time if the if the if the atmosphere was different then I would have did it but it wasn't the atmosphere wasn't right for it right right but how um, you know the people around they're also listening to all this nonsense and they're getting maybe swayed by what, what is being said. So how do we know when to actually speak up so that others are not deluded just because someone is talking nonsense? Well, I was sitting in the next to the last row when he was in the last row. Next to him was his two daughters. He had two daughters with him. And the person next to me was sitting one seat away. So that's the only ones that heard. Oh, okay. daughter, yeah. So one other person heard. Yeah, that's all. I didn't. I could see. You know, of course, I was getting a little irritated when I first heard it. And my uh, natural tendency is to say something was checked. I thought, mm. and you know, when we were getting off the plane and the plane landed, and we were getting our bags from the overhead. I actually uh, handed him his bag also, <laughs> just to be uh, polite. I handed him the bag. <laughs> mm. So I thought, you know, if he's going to change his attitude towards me, maybe it should be done in a different way. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, it's very instructive. That's, that's Everything that. That's rare for me. I usually don't act like that, but in this case, I could see this is, was the only thing to do. No, because it's very difficult to hear, for a devotee to hear, you know, there is no God, there is nothing, everything works on, you know, this and that. And, you know, to, to deny the presence of Krishna is like so difficult for a devotee or to even hear such a thing. So I'm just thinking to myself, uh, we must really know when, to say something and when not to say something. Yeah, I maybe I could, maybe I could have said something, but I didn't. Okay. He was very aggressive in his words, so I could just basically see that it was. Uh, I mean, when you speak about somebody like that, you could say one thing. Uh, well. Do you believe in death? Everybody believes in death. And then you just tell them, well, you may not believe in God, but God will come in the form of death. And <laughs> then you'll have to surrender. Then you have to pay, then you have to pay your obeisances. <laughs> because you're laying flat out, you're paying your obeisances. <laughs> true, 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 true. So Thank yeah. You. That's 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 like the one punch you can throw. Hmm. They don't believe in God, but they definitely believe in death. And death it represents that which that per, that force that takes everything away from you. Hmm. 
So that's Krishna. Krishna says, Mitra Sarva Halasya Aham. I am death, he says. And in another place in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, I am time, which he indicates to be the same thing. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> Uh, dear devotees, you can raise your hand um, or unmute yourself and ask questions. Or if you have any comments or realizations. Yes, Mataji, can you be a little louder um, near to the phone? Namata, Mataji. Uh, yes, Mataji, just listen. Your voice is not clear. Yes, it's. it's um... uh, am I clear? Am I clear now? Yes, yes, Mataji. Okay. Uh, please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Shri Aurobindo. All glories to Shri So I just wanted to share one experience which I just met recently. Uh, I, I I met a relative after a long time. Uh, basically after lockdown. So uh, he he is basically he he is not such a person that who doesn't believe in god but he's more of an atheist person uh and uh, he was just asking me why did you like uh, onion garlic and uh, what is the use of all these austerities and all that so uh, i felt the same as uh, Mataji, uh, Sri Devi Mataji was asking the question. I, I didn't uh, uh, argued with that person at that time, but at the same time, I felt like when is the time we should uh, answer back, or you know, we should tell something to the person, or we should we should just keep quiet. So uh, I had the same question as well at that time, but. Uh, as far as that person was concerned, uh, he was an aged person. So I felt like even if uh, I would have told something, it won't be a, of any use. So that's why I kept quiet. So I don't know. Uh, when should we tell something? I mean, when should we uh, tell them back that... Well, like, like I said, yeah, like I mentioned, you have to use your intelligence. But if you're in a group of people, then you should definitely speak for the benefit of the other people. Generally, the person who is challenging is not going to be changed. And usually when you get into a discussion with another person, you don't really change them. But if there's other people around, they can also learn what is the correct understanding by you speaking. That's one, re one reason to speak. But you can, you can defeat a person without even saying anything about Krishna consciousness. All you have to do is ask them questions based on their own knowledge and you can as soon as they answer you can show the faults in their their answers that's all the best way to defeat a person is not to argue your point but to tear apart their argument that's the art of debate the art of debate is to draw a person in to show the flaws in his own philosophy by questioning him based on what he says. 
and also making comments on they, on what he says. Once you did, once you sh show the, the futility of another person's arguments, then towards the end you can present your own knowledge. There's different ways to to get into a discussion, and that's the most effective way. Because you say something, and he says something, and you say something, and he says something. It just goes back and forth. And nothing is accomplished. They just show the futility, futility of their own stupid arguments by, you have to know the counter arguments of their arguments also. So you can do that. But therefore we should, we should definitely study Srila Prabhupada's books, not just read it, but study them and be able to, because if you don't discuss this philosophy, after a while you lose it. You need to discuss it. That's why we have regular classes. And the classes are meant not only for me to speak, but you for you to speak something and uh, make your questions and bring out your doubts and your arguments also. And that way a discussion ensues. Susan, discussion starts to come more and more knowledge starts to flow. That's why we always have time for questions and answers. So we should listen with the idea of trying to understand. And if we don't understand, we should immediately make that a note and then present that in the form of a question. And then from there, you go into more and more details and more subtle aspects of the same points. And that's how Krishna consciousness goes out and comes out, comes out through discussions, through questions and answers. Yes, Maharaj. I think I got many points. Um, when somebody is uh, argumentative against Krishna consciousness. Um, yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Namrata, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, there is a question on chat <clears throat> by Narsingha Leela Tasi Mataji. Uh, she is writing, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Shri Prabhupada. I have seen many devotees are very good in philosophy, but somehow or other they lack humility or some other characteristics. Lord Chaitanya, when preaching to Mayavadis, um, exhibited very humble nature. Can you please say more about it? Because I see in my case, I'm not good in philosophy and often when dealing with non-devotees, just trying to be kind. How is that important at all? Thank you. Well, Depends, you know, this, for people who have different natures, and uh, their nature will be connected to their words. <laughs> Some people are more passionate and more, uh, you know, you can, um, the idea is to remain fixed on what is being said and focus on the intellectual aspect out of it and not to get too much involved with the emotional, uh, because when you do, somehow or other, the, the philosophy gets lost and it gets caught in the emotions. Uh, but Lord Chaitanya knew how to debate with the Mayavadis, and so he, he used that as a tactic. So uh, you can preach very strongly and directly, or you can preach um, the same knowledge in a less uh, the less strong way. In other words, it depends on you. It depends on you. You see, the Prabhupada would sometimes oh he he get really fiery and discuss things in a very when he would deal with uh, certain people who are just. You know, uh, rascals, as Prabhupada would say, <laughs> in strong words. 
So I, again, it's not, it's just, there's no answer to that. All it is is time, place, and circumstances, learning how to deal with the situation. Just like one time there was one, I approached one person in a challenging way. This person had been criticizing a senior devotee and he had made so many statements about him. And then I took the opportunity to try to correct it. So I, I, I approached him and he just went off on me. He just started kind of just firing away. And I sat there listening. I sat there listening the whole time. And then when he was done, I said a few things. And after he was done, he actually realized he was wrong. <laughs> He came to his own conclusion he was wrong. If I would have went tit for tat with him, him, him saying something and I'm saying something back, uh, it, it wouldn't have worked. But that was, the, that was because of his personality, his way of doing things. In some cases, you have to do that. Just recently, I was at the, uh, what was it? Uh, um, Philadelphia Rathiatra, just it was the end of September. And it was a question and answer booth. And I was the person to sit there and answer the questions. And you get all kinds of characters coming in. And these various persons, they all have their half-baked philosophies. <laughs> Not even half-baked, but just raw, raw philosophy. <laughs> and so we had one, had one magician came in and he was he was presenting himself as some incarnation or something. <laughs> so he was, he was kind of firing questions at me. And when I would say something, he'd take it and twist it around. <laughs> so I, I realized I didn't want to deal with this person because. <laughs> so I just indicated to the other devotees who were standing in the audience, maybe you can talk to this guy because. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to, he's just going to waste my time. So I finally got someone, actually it was Prem Murti from, from uh, Croatia. He started talking to him. And uh, that gave me a chance to answer questions with, with people who were more interested in learning instead of arguing. Because there's always people who want to argue and they want to put their philosophy ahead, you know, they just want to waste your time. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, hope, Mataji, um, you got your answer. Okay. So, uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a follow-up question on this. Uh, like, you, usually I see uh, many people they don't follow one person or one God. Uh, they, they do everything like whoever they come across, they, they worship them. So mm -hmm. I feel sad for them. Like why, in, if they are sticking to only one person or one God, that's fine. But uh, they, are, they worship everyone. <laughs> like whatever you tell somebody, uh, tell something, they do that. that. So um, what, what should we, uh, how should we deal with them? Or how should we, uh, give Krishna conscious to them. Well, <laughs> and they draw a little bit from this source, and a little bit from that source, and something from this incarnation. And then they come up with some ideas that sound good. They don't even believe it themselves because <laughs> they're always changing based on who they hear yeah. next. <laughs> so. You just waste your time with these people. Uh, just tell them, you know, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and, uh, you know, here's some nice prasadam. It'll make you feel better. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just a waste of time. But uh, and sometimes if you can come up with some lines just to, uh, you know, you like the one like a punchline, you look for a line that just sweeps them off their feet, you know, just for like one line that will take care of all of their speculation in one shot. Mm -hmm. yes, Basically, what you can do is you, you ask them who they're hearing from, and then you find out the person, then you take apart his philosophy. 
Yeah. Show the message. Yeah. Thank you. Devotees, anyone have any questions? Sudha Mataji? Uh, yes, Mataji. Thank you. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my humble Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shalab Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj, my question is like, uh, um, just uh, still trying to understand uh, speculative knowledge and philosophical speculation. So speculative knowledge is something you're reading scriptures, but you're understanding, uh, trying to understanding using the current state of your mind. And philosophical is your reading and you're actually getting the knowledge and you're confirming that knowledge with Guru and Shastra. Is that Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you co the word is collaboration. You're collaborating that knowledge with other sources. Mm -hmm. With other bona fide sources. That's philosophical speculation. Mm -hmm. Like just like for example, mm -hmm. there's a debate in the end of the tenth canto, mm -hmm. which centers around who is the supreme? Is it Shiva or is it Vishnu? And so you'll find that that's been a current debate in different places. You have Shiva Kanchi, you have Vishnu Kanchi, you have the Shiva Purana that gives the uh, understanding that Shiva is actually the Supreme Lord. And so, um, and therefore, when you see different Shastras may say contrary things on the same topic, you have to go to that source, which is the most uh, authoritative. So, um, for instance, the Puranas may say something, or the Itihastas may say something. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you go to Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam will confirm it in the absolute sense because Bhagavatam is the Vedanta Sutra explained by uh, Vyasadev, who was an incarnation of Krishna himself. So you, uh, when you're dealing with contrary statements, in order to confirm what is the actual principle, you have to go to the source. Jiva Goswami mentions that in his Sandarbha, that there are many statements that are contradictory, but when you go to Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam will clarify that by giving the absolute principle. Um, thank you, Guru. So my just uh, follow-up question on that. So in both cases, speculative knowledge and philosophical speculation, so your state of mind is also important, Guru Maharaj, like uh, uh, to take the uh, knowledge? Yeah. Well, yeah. the, the understanding is submissive oral reception, which is the means for, for understanding transcendental knowledge. So that submissive oral reception also comes with reading of the Shastras also. Mm -hmm. okay. One has to apply that even when one reads from the Shastras. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, so we have to read and uh, mm. try, read, read to try to understand. Understand, okay. Yeah. You have to understand that the knowledge is correct and it's perfect. Now you have to just understand it. Okay. That's your yeah. that's your position. Okay. It's not that you're going to try to challenge it. Okay. Okay. So that Shastri, is Shastric knowledge is called the Parushad. The Parushad means it's not man made. Mm -hmm. It's coming from the absolute truth down okay. through the pure devotees, spiritual masters. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, Guru So that is the difference, Guru Maharaj, between speculative and philosophical. So when mm -hmm. you're philosophical speculation, you're accepting the truth and then you're asking, checking with the Guru and understanding. Yeah, there, that's the point. You just made it. You have to check with 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 someone who knows. 
in okay. that case, the pure devotee spiritual master or a pure devotee. Okay, okay. Yeah. Speculatives, like they don't even come to the truth. Well, they, they just read, they read and try to understand and then they take it and they interpret it in their own way, that's all. Okay, okay. God, yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's why there's so many editions of Bhagavad Gita. Well, everybody interprets it in their own way. Mm -hmm. Yes, gosh. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare. Devotees, any more questions? Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question, like uh, not related to this topic, um, but uh, when we could talk about devotional service, uh, the word service, uh, how, how strongly we consider this word service is the main point I was thinking. And, uh, yeah. and well, the main point is devotional and this, the activity is service. Hmm. If you say service, it could be any kind of service. But devotional service refers to that service, uh, uh, the sp that spiritual service. Or bhakti. Bhakti means devotional service, not just service, or not just devotion, but devoted. That, that service that's done with devotion. Yes, good much. But uh, my question is like, Oh, uh, now uh, coming into Krishna consciousness, we understood, um, I understand the importance of service and uh, how we should do the service with devotion and everything. But sometimes the ego comes in the middle and uh, it doesn't allow us to, uh, to go be, um, to the level of ser servant. Like if I get reminded of that I am a servant, sometimes I accept, sometimes I don't. Uh, like suppose <laughs> anybody can call me like uh, Dasi, Devi Dasi. So yeah, this is a new name for me, but, but suppose um, if anybody calls me as Devi Dasi instead of Mataji, so I feel like weird. Um, so I'm not fully um, accepting the concept of servant. So that's what I look into myself. Well, whether you accept it or not, that's your position. <laughs> that's true. That's true but, uh, <laughs> the fact is, can change their, no one can change their position. <laughs> everyone is everyone is a servant. <laughs> if you're not serving this in devotional service, you're serving in the material way. <laughs> all activities, all activities are done in a, in a, in in the category of service. Yes, Guru Maharaj, um, I understand uh, this one, but as you said, like in the material way, if we do the service or if we help someone or if we do uh, any work for others, so will that be also considered um, as like, uh, like we are doing some service in the material way also? Yeah, it's material service, that's all. Mm -hmm. You serve your children, you serve your husband, you serve, um, if you're working, you serve your boss, but that service is motivated by personal gain, therefore it's material. Mm. <clears throat> yes, good match. But uh, it's sometimes, um, why, why, I, why should I do? Why I should do this? Somebody else can do this. Why I should do this? This point will come in my mind. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, yeah, if you can do it, do it. But if you can delegate it to someone else and give them the benefit. Mm. So is it any problem with my ego? <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I just want to know that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, you we in order to serve, we have to accept service too. Mm -hmm. We accept service in order to give service. But service is a privilege. It's not some, not a chore. Yeah. If it's a chore, then your consciousness is in the wrong place. That's good. Yeah. It can become as something difficult if you take on too much service, and then that, that is over endeavoring. 
you have to be careful to balance your service out with your sadhana, where you have a complete picture of sadhana, which gives fuel to service and service, which actually is what connects us with Krishna. So there should be a balance. Too much service, there's no such thing as too much, but for a certain individual, it may appear to be like that, and therefore they can't do the service in the, in the right consciousness. Mm. One should be eager for service, but at the same time, one should not accept more than one can do nicely. Mm -hmm. Sure, much. Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj. Right, Sonia da 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 Dachri? We have to learn a lot of things from Shaumadatri Mataji. Hmm. <laughs> thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll keep it in mind. Okay. Uh, so thank Guru you. Maharaj, Sukhava Mataji has raised her hand. Uh, would you like to take Sukhava. a Sukhava. Yes. Is this coming from you or from your son? <laughs> He's from my son, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Um, I just, uh, I was just speaking to my mom, and uh, I thought it'd be, you know, um, if I could ask for your blessings, because uh, it's my birthday today. I turned twenty-two. Oh, okay. and, uh, well, happy birthday and best wishes. And your thank birthday. You. Nice. Um, I just thought it'd be nice to, uh, you know, ask for some. You know, some guidance or advice or anything you could give me for for the next year. Hmm. Uh, read Prabhupada's books, <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. Every day, mm -hmm. read read a little bit of Bhagavatam every day. Mm -hmm. You can start from the beginning and go through mm -hmm. it, or you can pick a section. And then read, read, and then, and then after you're done reading, go right to your mother and tell her what you read. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll be happy. Yeah. yeah. So I always recommend devotees read Prabhupada's books because it's the thing that we need in order to have a clear understanding of how devotional service. Mm. works mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely a habit i need to get back into but um yeah uh thank you maraj um okay thank you nice to see you and nice to speak with you best wishes on your birthday thank you thank you all right do you have a party tonight <laughs> uh i'll be i'm heading to soho temple um for wednesday oh, night kirtan yeah, yeah. Great. That's that's the the best way to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'll get to take darshan as well, so um, very lucky. So you see, Radha Lada and Ishwara are so beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the, yeah. Those deities were were found found by Prabhupada and established by Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I've heard, I've heard. Some people say, and many people say that that was Prabhupada's favorite set of Radha Krishna deities in this time. Wow. Um, Shamarani's smiling big too, I can see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go to the temple tonight too, Shamarani. I wish you were Raj, you can do it. <laughs> I could do, but I have a, you're not too, you, you're not so far away. No, I'm in a class with uh, take that's been given by Buddha Bhavana probably this uh, this evening. Oh, okay. Mm. You look like uh, you have been associating with Lord Ramachandra. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You have this certain you about you that is uh, uh, just a reflection of the screen behind. 
Okay. <laughs> now you went from Ramachandra to Krishna. Now you... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Soho, Radha, Sisi Radha Ladanishwar is one of the first deities in Iskand back in 1960. Their 40th, what was it? No. This month is their anniversary, isn't it? Or was it November? No, I think uh, the anniversary of the of the installation was in November, I think. Or 50th December. anniversary, I think. Fiftieth, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nineteen seventy-one. Mm. Must have been. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the class and thank you for the blessings. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, our read with you, whoever is here. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. See you. Oh, tomorrow is um, Charlotte, right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Tomorrow's class is with uh, Bhakti Sangha uh, Japati Gautis. It's the verse is uh, fifth canto, 14th chapter and 46th verse. That's the last verse of the chapter. Um, 540. We, we changed the time also. The time yes, is... Yes, it's, yeah, it's, the time is, yes, good time is 1220 p.m. UK time and 720 no, Eastern no, time. No, 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 it's, no. Uh, it's not 12, it's not 720, it's 710 now. 710, okay. Yeah, I uh, I did that. I changed okay. it with with Shamagori. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be ten minutes earlier. We'll start the program seven ten, twelve ten. All twelve. Yes. And um, you're on one ten. One ten. Yeah. One ten. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, Brajavi Lastini, Hare Krishna. Nice to see you. Are you cooking now? You You're are on. Mataji. Okay. Yes, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you. What? I'm I'm looking forward my to my next trip to Chicago. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, your uh, your sister in law really treated me nice last time. Mohini? Yeah. Mohini, Mohini, yes. Yeah, Mohini. <laughs> but I have to come to your house. That's, I haven't had that opportunity yet. Yes, Maharaj, yes, Maharaj. <laughs> if you let me. Of course, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. And I was like, waited, waited, you know. <laughs> I missed that last time I came, so. <laughs> that was my fault. I could have, I could have oh. got there, but. Uh, no, it's, it's okay, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> next time. Yes, yes, it's all right. Okay, thank you very much. And all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much. All glories to Chaitanya Charitamrita Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.